The area model has to be one of the most polarizing topics when it comes to math education. The outrage over this new math never ceases to amaze me. If you're watching this video, you're probably a math teacher and you likely already see the value in the area model. But if not, hopefully I'll change your mind by the end of this video. A few weeks ago, I was reading a research article about something completely unrelated, but in it, there was a group of teachers who were discussing the area model and I found their insights fascinating. It definitely gave me a new appreciation for the area model and gave me some ideas for how to use the area model in a way that is much more intentional. So I'm gonna break down five ideas that came from this article, which I've linked below in the description, and the implications that this has for how we use the area model in the classroom with students. The first thing that stood out to me came from one of the teachers who pointed out that there's kind of a built-in estimation tool in the area model. So the way that the area model is structured, the top left corner is naturally going to give you a somewhat reasonable estimate of the size of the product. That's something I've not really ever thought of before. Of course, it isn't going to give you the most accurate estimate, but how many students either forget to estimate or they really struggle to come up with an estimate. So having that built-in estimation tool is wonderful because it really helps students see if their answer is reasonable. A lot of times when students are working with the standard algorithm for multiplication, they end up with unreasonable answers because when they move over to the tens place, they forget that they're multiplying by a digit in the tens place. And so they end up with a pretty unreasonable answer. So my takeaway from this teacher's idea is really just to be more intentional with pointing out the information that is gained from that top left corner of the area model and refer back to it as needed with students. Another teacher in the article pointed out that the area model is a really important model because it emphasizes place value. Now, this is obvious, but it's important. We often do so much work to build students' understanding of place value, and then we throw that all out the window when it comes to the multiplication algorithm. So the area model is great for really building on to that place value foundation, extending it, deepening students' understanding of place value. And I also just think it's really good practice for students multiplying by multiples of 10. My takeaway for you here is just keep doing what you're doing if you're already using the area model because it is is needed and important. The next idea that came from this group of teachers was fascinating to me. So I believe this research study was done in Canada. And from my understanding, the grid method is much more popular than it is here where we predominantly use the area model. But ultimately the grid method and the area model convey the same idea. There are just some slight differences. So with the way that the grid method is set up, there's kind of a built-in check for adding up the partial products. So there's a horizontal column in a vertical column and you add up the partial products in the vertical column and you add up the partial products in the horizontal column and those two numbers should match which will give you your final product. Now if you mess up with the partial products like you mess up with your multiplication it's not going to catch that so I'm not sure how beneficial or useful this built-in addition check is but if you have students who are consistently messing up with adding up the partial products this might be an interesting strategy to try with students. And also, I really just think it's fascinating to see how math is done in different parts of the world. Your students might find it fascinating too. These last two ideas that came from the article, I really think are the most important. So idea number four is the fact that the area model is such a powerful visual because working with partial products and working with the distributive property is really very prominent in the area model. The distributive property is one of the biggest and most powerful concepts around multiplication for students to learn. And it starts in elementary and evolves all the way up into high school. Even though the area model is traditionally used in a really structured way, we can use it in a way that builds the flexibility that students will need in life outside the classroom when they come across situations that require multiplication, but they don't have a paper and pencil to draw an area model. Take a look at four different ways that we can solve the problem 26 times four using an area model. I think the takeaway here is really important, and that is to use the area model flexibly. Give students an opportunity to explore finding different partial products with the model. I think the most important idea to come from this paper in regards to the area model 
is the fact that the area model is an incredibly versatile tool, both within a grade level and beyond. I've always been fascinated about the fact that the area model can be used in third grade, all the way up to 10th grade and everything in between. It truly is a very powerful visual. Now, I'm gonna try not to go on a tangent here, but when we can use one model and extend its uses, that is so much more powerful than introducing different models for every new concept that we teach. It really deepens students' understanding by showing them the interconnectedness of the concepts they're learning. While I'm certainly not an expert in high school math, I do have a couple of math teacher friends in high school who said that the area model has been so valuable for them in working with multiplying polynomials. So you can see that this visual extends all the way up into high school. Now let's talk about the versatility of it within a single grade level. You can use the area model to multiply fractions and decimals, and I actually think it deepens students understanding and really show students what they're doing when they are multiplying by a fraction or a decimal, which a lot of times can feel really abstract. So let's think about multiplying two and a half times four. When we use the area model, we're showing students that First, you're finding two groups of four, and then you're finding half of four. So it makes sense of the operation. So my takeaway for you here is to explore using the area model with concepts outside of multiplying multi-digit whole numbers. One of the things I love about math is there is always more to learn, and there's always ways to improve the way that we teach math. So this article brought up a great question that I'm gonna ask you. Should we be emphasizing the teaching of the standard algorithm for multiplication? I'd love if you'd let me know in the comments, tell me why if you're up to it. If you're wanting to learn more about multiplication, I actually broke down the entire progression for multiplying fractions in this video right here.